think about when they start to research of like, well, we're having trouble getting pregnant. Is this normal? They may go to their, their OB, right? Their OB may say, well, you should go see a fertility specialist. But we have a lot of folks who may just on their own think, oh gosh, I'm having trouble getting pregnant. Maybe I should go see a fertility specialist. Well, I'd like to serve them content as to telling them when they should make that jump, right? So if you've been trying six months and you've been as successful, perhaps it's time to see a fertility specialist and, and go through some diagnostics. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here today with Nicole Braley, Chief Marketing Officer at Inception. Nicole, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, it is my pleasure. I appreciate you spending some time with us on Business Ninjas. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and about Inception. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are in the fertility space, um, so in the healthcare realm, and Inception is actually a holdings company. And underneath of that, we have a number of different brands, um, different verticals that serve the fertility space one of which is the Prelude Network, which is um, the largest network of fertility clinics across North America. Excellent. So and I have the opportunity to get to see all the things. All the things. There you go. And when did Prelude Network come to be? What's the origin story of Prelude Network? Sure. It's kind of been a little bit built by acquisition. So um, a number of years ago, um, it kind of started and, and has just grown. And Inception was something that came to be about six years ago. Um, and really the opportunity there is to kind of, you know, expand um, serving all kinds of geographies and also rural areas as well. So accessibility is one of the things we think about. Um, and if you think about fertility clinics, there's not a fertility clinic in every city, right, um, depending where you may live. So uh, we're excited to continue to expand um, our kind of footprint in that regard. And, and where does that footprint reach? Where, where are yeah. your locations? Everywhere. We're all the way from um, Vancouver and British Columbia down to San Francisco, um, all over Texas, uh, all over Florida, up to Chicago, uh, Indiana, um, all the way over to New York. And what sort of services do you provide? What's covered by uh, Prelude Network? Yeah. So if you visit one of our clinics, oftentimes our patients come to us uh, either through a referral through their OB um, if they're having trouble um, getting pregnant and or they may come to the, us on their own after doing their own research and having trouble getting pregnant. So they come to us to help build their family. And we are super excited to get to have the opportunity to do that. I know this is a strange question to think of. This is a competitive space because we're talking about, you know, uh, fertility and children and life in and of itself. But you do have competitors in your space. What makes the Prelude Network stand out from its competition? Absolutely. Yes, we're a business like anyone else. Um, and there is competition like anyone else. The thing that really stands out and differentiates us is our emphasis on patient experience. Um, so we take patient experience exceptionally seriously, right? It's not just something we say. It's not just something we put on our websites. It's something that's truly ingrained in everything from the marketing component all the way through to operations. Um, we're big on um, kind of serving our patients at every milestone of their journey with us. Uh, and we use a sophisticated tool to do that. So we have NPS scores um, that we measure and track and react to um, very actively. And then also the other component that makes us very different is our emphasis on employee experience. So we actually believe that employee experience drives a patient experience, um, a positive patient experience. So our emphasis on those two things is highly differentiated to our, our competition. Well, that's that's an important balance. If you have happy employees, they're far, far more likely to treat people well. And, and this is a sensitive subject, right? There are people with serious things going on in their lives on the other side of the equation. Yes. What are the most, pro I know this is, this may be a, a silly question, but what are the most pro common problems you're solving for your clients? Yeah, it genuinely is just getting them pregnant and we want them to have a, a healthy baby. And, and then as they want to continue to grow their family, we hope they come back and have baby number two with us or baby number three. Um, and so really that's our one um, mission is to help people build their families. 
And sometimes we can't always fulfill that mission, right, um, of helping them build their family, but we still want them to have such a wonderful experience with us that they would still recommend us to their um, friends or family who are looking for um, fertility specialists. Excellent. Uh, switch gears a little. Tell me about the COVID years and um, the challenges and opportunities and how you were able to grow the business through the COVID years. Yeah. So even despite COVID, people still want to build their family, right? And um, you know, so I think that the operational side was the the part that we needed to figure out, and we were really excited to take lead within the industry, even amongst our um, competitors, if you will, where we wrote protocols and we shared those protocols of what we were doing so that we could stay open and um, and serve our patients um, even during that time. And if you think about medicine in general and healthcare in general, telemedicine is a thing now, right? And, and people, whether it's for convenience or whether it's just preferred, um, it's still something that some of our patients want. And so it's really been actually a very nice thing that has come out of, um, you know, sort of those years uh, with COVID is learning how to adapt and serve our patients in different ways. Uh, so that's kind of been a silver lining. Excellent. Hey, everyone has to adapt. It's, you know, uh, control is an illusion, right? It's a human concept. And we, <laughs> we have to deal with, with the cards we are dealt. Um, put on your content, your, your, excuse me, I'm going to do that again. Put on your marketing hat for a second. What role has content played in the growth of Prelude Network? Huge. Uh, one of the first things that we, we really kind of embarked on uh, when I arrived here was um, it was a lot of kind of really understanding the brand architecture and, and solidifying that, and then really kind of jumping on that bandwagon of content marketing. And we know that our patients, unlike other industries, we know our patients, our customers spend a inordinate amount of time doing their own research. So they spend a lot of time uh, poking around and reading and trying to understand. And so we want them to be served our content during that research phase. So that way, when they're ready to act, uh, they act with us. And so content marketing is a big piece of what we do. And so we've been doing a lot of digital content, and we're really excited to explore additional channels here in the near future, um, such as podcasts and YouTube and additional social media channels as well. You speak our language. We have to engage and educate people. And again, your space is kind of a critical one. That's I would think there's many touches that have to happen before someone becomes a client in that sort of personal and serious space. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. What are the metrics? How many touches does it, does it take for a person? What is the, I hate to say sales cycle, but from the first moment mm -hmm. a person arrives on your website until they be, walk into your clinic, how long is that cycle? Yeah. So if you think about when they start to research of like, well, I'm ha we're having trouble getting pregnant. Is this normal? They may go to their, their OB, right? Their OB may say, well, you should go see a fertility specialist. But we have a lot of folks who may just on their own think, oh gosh, I'm having trouble getting pregnant. Maybe I should go see a fertility specialist. Well, I'd like to serve them content as to telling them when they should make that jump, right? So if you've been trying six months and you've been as successful, perhaps it's time to see a fertility specialist and, and go through some diagnostics. Um, so I think if you if you take out that of when they kind of come in and they're ready to make their appointment with us to when they initiate treatment, we're always looking to shorten that cycle. And that that can be anywhere from, you know, a month to, to six months to a year, depending on uh, physician availability, depending on where the, the patient's located, depending on when the patient is ready to start, depending on um, a number of things, financial, right? So the, the thing is we do measure that and we always want that to get shorter, right? We want folks to be able to get in and, and immediately get to treatment when they're uh, ready to go and, and we deem them ready to go. Um, but it's something that we wanna make sure we get them in the shoot to begin with is where we're really focusing um, on is that kind of more top to bottom and then bottom and then over. I'm not going to make any strange analogies about funnel and birthing. <laughs> you should hear all the things that go on around this office. We're always saying things like don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't. I mean, we're always making a lot of uh, metaphors that are kind of hearkening to what we do, right? Yep. All right. Well, fast forward a year from today, what are some things you'd like to be celebrating personally and professionally? Yeah, we just launched a e-commerce brand, which is a supplements and vitamins brand um, that I'm very excited about. It's called NutriBloom. And so I think in a year from now, I would love to be able to say, you know, NutriBloom is now available within all of our Prelude Network clinics. 
um, as well as sort of initiating additional channels on the B2C and maybe some B2B to C channels um, on the wholesale angle. So I think that that, that brand for us is a, a very different brand. I think it's an opportunity for us to serve content um, about our other brands, even our clinics. Um, so I think that's interesting. And I also think it's a one brand that we have that will expand outside of our fertility customers. I think it's a brand that will be able to serve additional personas. So I'm really excited about that brand and kind of watching it grow. Um, and we're learning a lot along the way as well. So excellent. Well, please tell us what's the URL for Prelude Network? Where can people find you and what yeah. social media outlets you're using these days as well? Absolutely. PreludeFertility.com. And you can find Prelude Fertility on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, we are not yet on TikTok. We, we need to put a whole plan around that. But um, that is probably next. We have a couple of doctors who are who have raised their hand and said they are, they are willing to be on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so. Nicole Braley, Chief Marketing Officer of Inception. Thank you so much for talking to us today about the Prelude Network. We wish you and yours and all of your patients all the best in the future. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for having me. My distinct pleasure.